Some are saying we could not see travel return for certain parts of the country to normal levels, quote unquote normal levels, in three to four years. Airlines, why, are, why do they keep going higher? Well, for one reason, airlines, they can direct their capacity where they need to, where the demand is higher. So that is encouraging. Um, and what we've seen is like the demand environment is challenging, but it is getting better uh, you know, every week. Uh, the, the trend has slowed uh, since uh, what we saw back in October with new restrictions. But generally, we're, we're heading in the right direction. And as as the vaccines uh, you know, get out to the population and we start to see some of these restrictions come down, you can see things improve quite a bit as you head into the end of this year. So I think there's a lot of hope uh, and, and expectation for light at the end of the tunnel. All right. That's the reason why the, 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 the light at the end of the tunnel argument is why we have seen and it's justified these airline stocks go higher. Is there a separation happening within the industry among those who are better positioned for that recovery as it develops versus those who may have more baggage, so to speak? You, definitely. And in two ways. One is, you know, what we have more certainty about is that leisure and visiting friends and relatives type travel will come back. I, th I think and, and domestic travel will rebound sooner. So airlines that are exposed to those uh, that, that level of demand are better positioned. And then there's another thing that that's kind of separating the group. And that's those airlines that have better balance sheets uh, and that can take advantage of that recovery and invest and and, and grow that supply. So it, there is a definite separation that will happen coming out of this. But right now, I think there's a, the group move as, as just recovery uh, sets in. All right. So the rising tide, the rising drafts, if you will, for the airline business are certainly taking them all up higher. As an analyst, you're looking at the winners and losers on a relative basis. So who's best positioned right now? Who's going to outperform and which are the ones that you maybe want to stay a little bit further away from? You're right now. The demand is, uh, you know, very much le leisure and VFR, as I mentioned, um, and very much domestic. So our uh, kind of picks early on is for, you know, leisure, more, leisure focused airlines, more domestic focused airlines. So we really like Allegiant and Alaska here. And as the business recovers, I think SkyWest is another good airline uh, that, that we like as well. Among the large caps, um, you know, Southwest is definitely well positioned. And for a recovery trade, we think kind of the risk reward at United looks interesting. And um, what about ones, ones we would be a little bit more concerned about is like American. I think they're well positioned from a geographical standpoint in the near term, but they do have a lot of debt that they need to work through uh, over the next few years. How dependent is the industry on more fiscal aid for 2021? They made a lot of headlines for how many billions they got last year. Do we need to continue giving airlines that kind of money as taxpayers for them to really survive? Yeah, last year's CARES Act was very important, especially the loan program. Um, the, this, this new program helps. It's, it's a, for some airlines, it's a little bit of found money. It's really important for, obviously, the labor groups here. Um, and, and it keeps the airlines, if there is a faster recovery, it keeps, uh, it keeps their operations on a ready mode. Um, I think from a stimulus standpoint, it's more important what the economy gets because once, uh, once we can travel, we want a strong consumer and we want strong businesses. So I think that's probably going to be more important for airlines going forward uh, to, to be able to really kind of recover and get back. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.